See how easy it is? I bet you didn't know, did you? Most people don't. You just pull a trigger and somebody dies. And they don't come back no more. He was a very intense guy. And he was a guy who had a very intense operating style. What are you doing this for, Tony? You take a guy like Cassell out in the weeds and unload a gun at him. Why? I'm gonna rattle him. I'm gonna rattle him good. What does it get you? I'll tell you what it's gonna get me. I'm gonna keep pushing him till I get his brain so scrambled that he makes that one big mistake. And then I'm gonna be there. And I'm gonna nail him, Billy. I'm gonna nail him, cause he's bad. Hey! You pigs looking for us? They're young, they're tough, they work together. Starsky and Hutch. In 1975, Starsky and Hutch became television's first pinup cops. They were hip and handsome, and they brought the decade's youth and attitude to law enforcement. What's the matter, punk? You lose your nerve? I love Starsky and Hutch because they were real buddies that were such humor. I mean, they would have a 10-minute argument whether they're going to go to the hot dog stand for lunch or the hamburger stand. Will you please be careful? You're going to spill the... See what you did all over my seats. You know, Starsky, the underlying hostility that triggers a burst of temper like that is usually associated with immaturity. Oh, I see. Just because I don't want you to spill your breakfast all over my seat, suddenly I'm immature. I, I never said that. No, what you're saying is that I'm hostile, which makes me immature. Well, I'd like to know where you get off thinking that I'm hostile. Zebra 3, Zebra 3, come in, please. What do you want? I think that in the relationship of these two characters, people found a tremendous amount of trust and dependency on each other and the fact that in the midst of this chaotic world such a relationship could exist. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Jesus. I thought you were dead. Not all 70s cops looked like rock stars. I was proud to be one crime fighter who relied on brain over brawn in pursuit of some of television's most cunning bad guys. Oh. Believe me, I know just how you feel. Dubrowski, I don't even know how I feel. Columbo was a great show. What was brilliant about the way it was written was that you knew who murdered them from the get-go, and you still wanted to watch to see how he caught them. Well, to tell you the truth, I came here, I think, to make an arrest. Mrs. Holland? Yes? My name is Joe Mannix. I'm a private investigator. I wonder if we could talk. The private investigators of 70s television stood in stark contrast to their no-nonsense police counterpart. They were reluctant heroes whose talent for solving crime was often rooted in their quirky personalities and unconventional methods. You know, I fell for that trick once myself. Works pretty good, doesn't it? I would say The Rockford Files was uh, miles ahead of all the other crime shows on television because of the personality of James Garner. He has a wit, a genuine wit, a style. You just want to watch him. you got to be one of the dumbest-looking apes I ever saw. No private eye ever had a father or a relative. Mannix, I never knew who his family was, you know? So I just sat down and I just thought, I'm just going to break every rule that I can think of that pertains to private detectives. Hey, I'm sorry, Dad. You just caught me at a bad time, huh? But reading that detective fiction doesn't help, really. Really, things aren't like that, you know? They're never black and white. There aren't any heroes. They die young. See? His gun is deadly. Mine's in a cookie jar. Underneath, he was really a softie. You know, and he knew he was a softie, and uh, he was guarding against it all the time. Well, now hold it a minute, huh? Can't we talk about this? We can talk about it a little while. If I say some of the wrong things, well, you can always get to this. What do you say? 
That was a really wonderful character because he was a reluctant hero as opposed to a, an expected hero. You've been fighting. Not me, no. The other guys did the fighting. I stood there and caught punches. So could I trade this in for a scotch and soda, please? Did you ever see a show in the 70s where the good guys lost? They don't want to see the good guys lose. They see that every damn day on their streets, in their offices, in their homes. You could go to bed at night knowing that guys like Rockford and uh, Kojak and uh, Starsky and Hutch were out there in the streets making it safe for the rest of us. You just do that. We create characters and situations that provide us with some sense that it is possible to create an order in the chaos. And that is our world of, uh, of police drama. Coffee! Up next, Mary Tyler Moore, B. Arthur, and Linda Carter on how the women of the 70s changed television. Don't go away. The 70s will continue in a moment here on ABC. Hi, I'm Betty White, and of course I've been on television every decade since the Neanderthals. During the 70s, I played a very unconventional woman on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. My character, Sue Ann Nivens, was a study in contrast. She hosted a TV show about the joys of homemaking, yet she was unmarried herself, and quite well known for playing the field. <laughs> <clears throat> like Sue Ann, the women of 70s television had come a long way from the happy housewives and helpmates of 50s and 60s television. From Mary Richards to Maud, new characters and shows reflected the explosion of the women's movement and the changing demographics of the workplace. Suddenly, women on television emerged as bold, outspoken, and independent. <laughs> Society was different. This was the era of Betty Friedan and finding yourself as an individual. It was a message that I know permeated young women's hearts and minds. It was the beginning of the feminist movement. Women, for the first time, would listen to what we were saying and say, yes, damn it. I have a right for this and I have a right to that. I, Rhoda Morgenstern, just asked this terrific guy out and uh, he said, sure. Oh, I thank you, Ms. Magazine. I never could have done it without you. So I would be walking around my living room, and every once in a while, my name or Ms. Magazine would come out of the television set, you know, as a symbolic event that, that we were used that way, that we were used as kind of a touchstone, you know, as change for women. And I was and am very proud of that. How will you make it on your own? In 1970, the Mary Tyler Moore Show featured for the first time a career woman who was vivacious, enterprising, and single. Hello, dear. I hope I'm not disturbing you. I was in bed. Oh, good. Then you're alone. <laughs> Breaking TV tradition, Mary Richards faced the world without the conventions of husband, home, and family. Mary Richards really did reflect what was going on, a kind of independence, belief in oneself, even through the darkness of insecurity. I know I shouldn't care what people think, but I do. I can't help it. That's the way I am. I wash my hair before I go to the hairdresser. <laughs> Somebody's stomach rumbles. I'm terrified that people will think it's mine. <laughs> Once I went into a bookstore to buy a copy of what you always wanted to know about sex but were afraid to ask. I was afraid to ask for the book. <laughs> she was an innocent and pure person, and she stood up for herself. What religion are you? Uh, Mr. Grant, I don't quite know how to say this, but uh, you're not allowed to ask that when someone's applying for a job. It's, it's against the law. Want to call a cop? <laughs> Good. Would you think I was violating your civil rights if I asked if you're married? Presbyterian. <laughs> it was fractious for him to be saying, you know, what is your status? How old are you? None of those things were his business. Look, miss, would you try answering the questions as I ask them? Yes, Mr. Grant, I will, but it does seem that you've been asking a lot of very personal questions that don't have a thing to do with my qualifications for this job. You know what? 
You got spunk. Well, I hate spunk. <laughs> <laughs>